While dining at an upscale restaurant, I found myself in an unexpectedly tense confrontation with my mother-in-law. She glanced at me dismissively, smirking with a wave of her hand, her contempt unmistakable. Frustration simmered within me, but I kept my composure. Are you asking me to leave? I asked, my voice steady despite the anger just beneath the surface. I was ready to walk out when she abruptly interjected. Wait a minute. If you leave now, who will pay the bill? Hand over the money. Her tone was both arrogant and commanding. I responded with a calm smile. Why should I pay for someone who's practically a stranger to me? My name is Emma. I'm 31 years old and I work in an office. My husband James and I usually have a harmonious life together, but his mother's intrusive and domineering behavior is a constant strain. Living nearby, she often drops by our home uninvited, always ready to critique for my cooking, which she claims isn't good enough for her son, to my housekeeping, which she deems inadequate. Despite knowing I work full-time, she often criticizes me for not keeping a perfect home, especially when she visits in the evenings. What's more frustrating is that she portrays a different persona around James, making it hard for him to see her true nature. He remains oblivious, believing her behavior to be harmless since he's never witnessed her harshness firsthand. The situation escalated further when she acquired a key to her house, courtesy of James, making it almost impossible to set the boundaries I desperately needed. She frequently uses this key to enter our home whenever she pleases, often to criticize my cooking or cleaning and to disparage me to our neighbors. It's become one issue after another with her. I've repeatedly told James that I'd prefer us to move further away, but he's been so focused on a major project at work that my concerns often go unnoticed. Then, unexpectedly, things began to shift. James received a promotion due to the success of his project, increasing our income, and finally allowing him to consider a move. With this new financial stability, he's even started talking about the idea of starting a family, making me hopeful that we might finally establish the boundaries I've been longing for. I agreed, but I made it clear, if we were going to raise children, we needed a more family-friendly environment. Our current area lacks safe play spaces and had limited daycare options. After much discussion, my husband finally agreed that moving was the right choice. This decision brought me more joy than his promotion. However, my happiness was short-lived. The next day, my mother-in-law arrived unannounced, as usual, which immediately irked me, bracing myself for her criticisms. But this visit was different. She seemed excited and wanted to celebrate her son's promotion by inviting him to a lavish restaurant known for its exquisite cuisine and exceptional service. That sounds nice good for you, I replied, trying to remain polite. You're still not very friendly, she remarked, then continued, Anyway, I want you to come with us. Please join us. I tried to keep my options open without committing. I'll see if I can, but it might not work out, I replied. Don't say that. We want you to come, she insisted, brushing aside my hesitation. Her sudden eagerness for me to join, despite frequently excluding me from family outings, left me both puzzled and cautiously hopeful that maybe this could mark a shift in our relationship. Later, I brought it up with my husband. He explained that he'd already agreed to accompany her and that she'd taken the initiative to book the restaurant for all of us. You're excited about this, right, Emma? He asked with a hopeful tone. I decided to be honest. Actually, I'm not. I'm worried about the expense at such an upscale place. Maybe you could let them know I'm busy and just go without me. Why are you being so negative? He replied, disappointed. It's not just us. My brothers and their wives will be there too. It would be strange if you didn't come and celebrate with everyone. His enthusiasm was clear, but it felt like he wasn't really listening to my concerns. It was as though he was siding with his mother's wishes over mine. If that was the case, I had a backup plan. I had purchased a small voice recorder online to discreetly capture any unkind remarks she might make during the evening. If she acted out, I'd play it back for my husband to help him understand the situation. If he still took her side after that, it might be time to reassess our relationship. Though this decision gave me some peace, the idea of joining them at the restaurant felt daunting, and I couldn't help but sigh at the thought. Additionally, I barely knew my husband's brothers, making the prospect even more unsettling. I had only briefly met my husband's brothers and their wives at our wedding, and our interactions had been limited to polite hellos. When we arrived at the restaurant, a waiter led us to a spacious room where my mother-in-law, one of my husband's brothers and his wife, along with another brother and his wife, were already seated. The table was elegantly set, 
creating an atmosphere for what was meant to be a celebratory dinner. However, confusion arose when my husband noticed there was only one empty chair at the table. He looked puzzled, wondering if there had been a mistake with the seating arrangement. Did the waiter mess up? I'll go check, he said before leaving the room. As soon as he stepped out, everyone at the table began to eat, and that's when my mother-in-law turned to me with a harsh glare. There's no seat for you. Why would I invite someone who just married into our family to this celebration? Here's your choice. Do you want to be part of our family, or do you want to leave and never come back? What's it going to be? Without a moment's hesitation, I replied firmly, No, I'm leaving. My mother-in-law seemed momentarily taken aback, as if she had expected me to beg for her acceptance. Instead, she threw out another challenge. Listen, if you pay for everyone's meal here, I'll accept you as part of James's family. You must be upset about being treated like a stranger, so pay up and become family. I had already made my decision. I told you I'm leaving. Why should I pay for someone else's family meal? I shot back, stating to leave. In response, my mother-in-law slammed her hand on the table, shouting, Don't you understand? I'm trying to make you part of the family. Are you okay with being the stranger? Pay up. No, I'm fine being a stranger, and since I am one, I'm not paying for your meal. Goodbye. I walked away swiftly, but she tried to catch up to me. By the time she reached the door of the room, I was already at the exit. Once home, I considered emailing my husband about the incident when he returned just 15 minutes later. The reservation was correct and my mom is causing a scene, he explained after learning the truth from his brother. I heard everything from my brother. I'm sorry you had to go through that, he added, his tone filled with concern. You came back quickly, I remarked, relieved but still distressed by the events. It seemed like she would have caused a scene whether you stayed or left. How could I sit with them after they insulted you? He replied, his understanding of the situation reassuring me. This confrontation seemed to have a ripple effect. It appeared to awaken a realization among my husband's brother's wives who had previously felt they had to silently endure such treatment. Inspired by my stand against my mother-in-law's attitude, they too began to assert themselves. Soon after, they left the restaurant with their husbands. Predictably, my mother-in-law didn't take this well. Within hours, my phone began ringing incessantly with her calls. Despite my attempts to ignore them, the constant ringing forced me to block her number. Unfortunately, the quiet didn't last long. I received a call from an unknown number, and the voice on the other end introduced himself as a police officer from a nearby station. Hi, sorry for calling so late. Is this Emma's phone? He asked. He then explained that after everyone had left the restaurant, my mother-in-law had attempted to dine alone but insisted that I should cover the bill. When the restaurant staff refused her request to defer payment, believing I wouldn't return after my angry departure, she found herself in a difficult situation. The restaurant suggested she pay with a card, but she had neither a credit card nor enough cash to cover the cost of everyone's meals. After trying to reach out to other family members for help, her frustration escalated quickly. She began yelling, blaming me for her predicament, and in her rage, she started damaging the restaurant's property, including expensive vases and flower pots. This commotion led the staff to call the police. Despite the officer's attempts to calm her down, she insisted on her innocence and continued her tirade. Now the restaurant faced not only an unpaid bill but also the aftermath of my mother-in-law's outburst. They requested that someone take her home. Feeling somewhat responsible after hearing the officer's account, my husband and I reluctantly headed back to the restaurant. Upon our arrival, we found the police still trying to soothe my mother-in-law. With her arms crossed, she glared at me and burst out, You're useless. This happened because you didn't pay the bill. It's only right to help your mother. Pay up now. I was stunned by her audacity, especially in the presence of law enforcement. The officer then informed us that if no one was willing to take her home, they would have to detain her for causing a disturbance and damaging property. The situation had spiraled far beyond a simple family disagreement, highlighting the severe consequences of her unchecked behavior. Faced with the prospect of the police either driving her to her house or arresting her for not settling the restaurant bill, I firmly replied, take her away. Arrest her or whatever. Just make her take responsibility. My mother-in-law looked at me in disbelief. How can you say something so heartless? I can't believe it. Just pay the bill. It's not good to have a family member arrested, she pleaded. I don't care. 
I'm not family and I don't want to be around someone who acts crazy and causes trouble. I retorted, ready to leave the restaurant and let the authorities handle the situation. My husband, who had remained silent until now, gave me a stern look. I know what happened to Emma was wrong, but is it worth getting arrested over, he asked. That's not the point, I replied, exasperated. She's in trouble because she didn't pay the bill and cause a scene. It has nothing to do with me. Are you saying it's my fault for not paying for five people's meals when I didn't even eat? My husband didn't respond but walked past me to speak with the police and restaurant staff. I sensed what he was about to do and in a last-ditch effort to assert my stance I prepared to voice my thoughts once more. I called out to him, if you pay for her meal and bail her out, we're getting divorced. Think about that. However, he continued without a word, pulling out his wallet. Defeated, I sighed and left the restaurant. I walked home, packed my things, and prepared to leave. Just before the day ended, my husband returned looking worn out. Mom's not getting arrested. It turns out she was wrong. The restaurant agreed to forgive her if I came back and promised she wouldn't return, he explained. I hadn't brought enough money, so I called my brothers for help. As he recounted the details of his day, I remained unmoved, barely reacting to his words. Noticing the bags I was packing, he asked, bewildered, what's with the bags? I'm getting ready to leave because we're getting divorced. I told you if you took her side, we get divorced. You can't pretend you didn't hear me, I said firmly, packing my things while he looked on in surprise. Then he raised his voice, what's going on? You've been acting weird all day. I know mom did something bad, but why do we have to get divorced? I already told you I'm being mistreated. Even when you see proof and hear others talk about it, you still choose your almost arrested mom over me. Is it weird that I want to divorce someone like that? I've had enough. Exhausted from having to defend my decision yet again, I packed faster, determined to leave. My husband continued to speak, his voice filled with confusion and distress, not fully grasping the depth of the rift between us. Having resolved to move on from our tumultuous relationship, I quickly prepared to leave and gather the necessary paperwork for a divorce. The next morning, I signed the divorce papers. Though my husband was reluctant to end our marriage, he ultimately signed them too when faced with the prospect of legal action. I submitted them without delay, finally ready to embrace my independence. Soon after our separation, my husband moved out and returned to his parents' home. Having relied on me for most household chores, he struggled to maintain a tidy living space. Frustrated by the mess, he decided to cancel his apartment lease and move back in with his parents. His brothers followed suit after he reached out for financial assistance to repay the restaurant bill. This led to significant conflicts with their wives, who protested that they shouldn't have to pay for a debacle they hadn't caused. The brothers, siding with their mother, used their own money to help without consulting their spouses, deepening the rift and leading to accusations of being unreasonable and fears of legal consequences. Their dismissive attitudes toward their wives caused rapid deterioration in their marriages. Facing similar disputes, the brothers too returned to their parents' home, lamenting their struggles to manage their households. This entire saga turned my mother-in-law and her sons into the talk of the neighborhood. Rumors spread that the brothers had been abandoned by their wives. My mother-in-law dismissed such talk as nonsense and tried to paint us as ungrateful and undutiful. The estranged husbands echoed her sentiments, smugly blaming the failed marriages on their wives while feeling confident that divorcing was the right choice. Fortunately, I had maintained strong relationships with my neighbors who saw through these narratives. My mother-in-law gained an unfavorable reputation for her poor parenting, having failed to instill proper values or independence in her sons. Meanwhile, the husbands were now seen as mama's boys, notorious for prioritizing their mother over their spouses. This entire situation highlighted the underlying issues within the family and reinforced the community's perception of the true dynamics at play. Despite attempts from my exasperated mother-in-law and the husbands to reconnect, I had already changed my contact information and relocated to a new area, effectively disappearing from their radar. They likely continued to grumble about losing contact, but for me, the absence of my mother-in-law's stressful presence is a tremendous relief. In this new chapter of my life, making new friends has been incredibly transformative. During the process of my divorce, I forged strong bonds with the ex-wives of my husband's brothers. United by our mutual frustrations with the matriarch of their family, we found solace and camaraderie in each other's company. Now we frequently spend time together, enjoying meals out, shopping, and relaxing on weekends.
Interestingly, I might owe a nod of gratitude to my ex-husband for inadvertently introducing me to such wonderful people. It feels liberating to pursue our interests without interference. The simplicity of this newfound freedom is refreshing, allowing us to live our lives on our own terms, far removed from the negative influences of people like my former mother-in-law. I'm immensely thankful for these friendships. Without this supportive group, I might still be navigating solitude, but they have brought joy and companionship into my life, and I'm hopeful that our bonds will last a lifetime.